Welcome everyone, it's Jafu from Medieval Mirage and today is the 4th of November 2021 and I wanted to show you how you can make your own vintage wallpaper or antique wallpaper for your journal page signatures. Just ordinary plain copy printer paper, 80% GSM, that's all you need and you can get some beautiful effects um, with these. So here's just another one that I'll be showing you how to make today. Now I didn't do the embossing of these ones but I did do one. So please um, stay with me to watch how I inked everything up, how I put it together and of course um, I did do a video, you might want to watch that on how you can make your own inking board. This is really great if you're shying away from inking your edges or using anything to do with inking. If you don't know what I'm talking about, please continue watching. I have links in the description box uh, to particular tutorials, just like I mentioned with this one, for what you need um, for this particular tutorial. So let me just put these out here so that you can have a look at these. Now this one here is um, uh, that one there. So I'll be showing you how to do that. So this is what they all started out off with. They all started off on white paper. And the trick is to only use your embossing machine once. You don't need to be heavy handed because otherwise you'll get into trouble like I had here. It will weaken your papers. So just keep that in mind. Um, but anyway, this is the results that I wanted to show you that you can get. And I did turn my camera on after I had made a start, but don't worry, I do explain everything. I will show you the colors that I used, the embossing folders that I used, and how to get these beautiful results. So let me just give you another quick look. Just going to move that around a little bit because there's hints of gold here and there. And that's what it looks like. Plain white, which is nice. But why not make it into your own vintage antique wallpaper? Um, there was something else I wanted to show you, tell you. If you do do inking up or you make mistakes or it gets a little bit oh, heavy handed, I will show you how to fix that as well. So I not only show you how to continue using your ink at your inking board, I will show you how to get these effects and I will also show you how to dull down or mute something that's a bit over the top and how to fix up some kind of glaring mistakes. And um, yeah. Now this one here, I never got to finish it, so I may as well just do that with you, just quickly. And then we'll get the tutorial, well we may as well get the tutorial started now with me, here. Okay, so I'm just going to throw that on very softly, that's it. Okay, so this page here was just a little bit over the top with the gold. And um, I will show you how you can absolutely fix something like that up. Oh, that's so much better. Okay. Let's get cracking in with our tutorial. If you're wondering about the way that I've coffee stain these papers it will be the faded and fade method which works with my silhouette kits in my shop so I'll list that tutorial below but other than that everyone thank you so much for your beautiful support if you're new here please consider subscribing to everyone welcome please join me on this journey we make our own vintage antique wallpaper signatures for our journals decorative papers to make our journals unique and beautiful. Please, please keep watching. Hey everyone, it's me. I hope you're all doing well. 
Um, now, when I was looking over my video, I wasn't really happy with the presentation of um, using this. Now, I'm not an expert at using this, um, so I'm hoping you're not going to learn any bad habits from me. But this is how I kind of play with my Big Shot. Um, now, um, I hope that this will be a lot better than the previous presentation, which will be deleted by now. Okay, so it's all about the embossing folder. And um, it can be a little bit tricky, so we're just going to do this. Okay, so basically it's just a matter of folding up your paper. You can, you can, you can use already tea stained paper, coffee stained paper. Uh, you can use my faded and frayed method if you've got the silhouette kit, um, or you can just have white paper because this is what you can do when you've got white paper. So, um, yeah. So just carefully fold this up, um, and I haven't really done a very good job, but this is just for the sake of the video. So anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to um, basically get this to go this way. And I prefer it to, to for it to stop in the signature because you don't really get to see much of the signature. You tend to see more of the edge of the page. And I just hope this all just line up. And this is the one that we're going to go a little bit off off the beaten track because we want to have this one completely. So my paper is not um, perfectly folded, but you want to make sure you get a perfect fold. So you only want to do this the one time because as you would have seen previously, um, I had issues because I kept forgetting that I'm just dealing with 80 GSM. I'm not dealing with, say, you know, 100 or 120 gram cardstock. When you're dealing with this, you can run it a couple of times, the embossing folder, but when you're dealing with fragile paper, you really ideally want to just do it the one go. And it can be really challenging when one of the plates that you want to use or folders is a lot thicker than the other. So it would be ideal if they were both the same same thickness, but it's not going to always be available to you. So all you need to do is play around with what you have. So you might want to do a few test runs with just ordinary paper that you don't mind getting rid of if you make a mistake. So the trick is now to get this as thick as that. So what I would recommend that you do is just get some cardstock. So I think this is about, oh dear, I'm just trying to think. I think this is about 100, no, it could be 120 GSM. Um, yeah, okay. So when I'm using cardstock, uh, when I'm using folders, sometimes I can't even... Um, sometimes what I find is I can't even use the plates, they're just too thick. And what I end up doing is getting cardstock and just folding it in half and using that as a pressure plate um, to get something through, especially if it's ultra thick. And sometimes some embossing folders are just, you could almost pass them through on their own, that's how thick they are. So it can be a little bit fiddly. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually just put that over it and see if I can get it through so that it's got enough pressure. Because what will end up happening is this won't get any pressure and you won't even see the image, maybe partially, and this one will. So let's just give this one a go. Okay. So I'm already sensing that that's not going to be enough. So I'm going to fold another one and I'm just going to put it on the top. Um, and we'll slowly build it up. Okay, so let's just put that there. 
Okay. Yep, no, we still need to go a bit more. So you're going to decide on how this is going to go down. So you can put it on the back and the front if you so wish, but I'm just going to put it on the top with the um, with this like this. And I've also cut these two pieces because we want to just add to it gradually. So I'm going to put that in there. It just makes it easy to glide through. Oh, I'm so sorry everyone. <laughs> I had the wrong one in there. I had the wrong one. Um, yeah, okay, let's do that again. So all you're gonna do is get your um, folders ready. Because remember, the problem I had was one was thicker than the other. So I'm lining that one up. I'm getting my plates ready. Just line that one up. And then I've got um, the flourish one and slip that round get that to sit there beautiful and I don't mind that that's gone a little bit off the page because that's going to happen from time to time and then what we need and where did it go it is. okay so I'm gonna try and keep everything sort of lined up so that it doesn't go off and so we're just going to slowly build this up now um, I'm not going to use this plate I'm just going to use these on top of the thinnest folder this one doesn't need it at all it'll be fine on its own so you can slowly build this up depending on your cardstock so you can start off with it folded because that's going to help get it through. And then if you feel that there's not enough pressure, then do another piece, lay it on top, thread it through. And if that doesn't work, get another one and just keep building it up until you can get it through without breaking this, <laughs> but with a little bit of pressure. And keep this don't throw these away. These can be reused and reused um, for any future projects that require you to make adjustments with your pressure plates. So we're going to take one off. Okay, that's too much. Okay, here we go. So with this one, it's just two, two pieces of cardstock. And it will be a firm, but don't panic too much. Just take your time. And that was quite firm. So again, you're going to have to play around with what works and what doesn't. Okay, so let's have a look at what we've done. And okay, so you will find that it does cut into it, but remember, this is a wallpaper experience, and with anything vintage and old, you are going to get that effect, aren't you? You're going to get an effect that looks damaged, that looks worn, that looks torn. That looks aged so that's what you um, have to keep in mind so don't worry if it does cut through if you don't like that then I just recommend you go for a hundred GSM because uh, this is only 80 GSM a hundred GSM or 120 GSM and then you'll get um, no cuts or damage to your papers Okay, so I hope that was helpful, but just remember that, again, I'm not an expert at 
using these I tend to not read instructions I just kind of do things a lot by experimenting and intuition so when it comes to something like a big shot you may prefer to watch someone who knows what they're talking about or who's familiar with the product I just want to get in and get out <laughs> I just want to get in get my embossing done or my die cuts done and out and I just fiddle around so sometimes it may pay for you to look at the instructions like these but you can pull some of these away and then thread it through you know thread it through this way and you know put your plates here top and bottom and then run it through so it can be tricky but there are ways around it and so I was just showing you how basically you can get um, the same pressure for both two different thick um, folders on the one page and get that kind of vintage wallpaper experience okay so with your little extra pieces of paper just keep them with your die cutting folders and in that way um, what will happen is they're always there. Thank you for putting up with me. Let's get back to the tutorial. So I've been showing you how you can ink up your edges by making your own inking board and that you just wrap it around the same size as your papers, that, as your signatures and away you go. But you, can, but you can also use it if you are kind of doing a bit of detail work. And for me, I like to be able to hold things up close to myself. And so a lot of what you see here, that's what I've done. I've been able to do some dry brushing, as you can see with my um, gold finger. <laughs> no pun intended. Um, and I've just gone over that with a bit of um, this beautiful gold. I absolutely love this gold. Um, I actually had to buy some acrylic paints and I... Um, decided to try this person here Brie Reese like I said I'm not affiliated with anyone nor do I know who they are um, but I thought I'd give it a go and they had gold in it and I absolutely love it it's beautiful um, and that's what I've put onto this here so um, I went a little bit over <laughs> I went a little bit over the top here um, but yeah I yeah sort of went ooh, too much but anyway what's really great about this is you can create your own kind of wallpaper effects just by using your um, your folders if you're into if you've got any folders um, and I've done this with this and it's a little bit over the top um, this is a lot more subtler um, but I did it on white paper to kind of create a wallpaper look now what I have found is sometimes depending on what you have to apply sometimes you can make a bit of a mess like I have here it's a little bit trickier with the gold here but if you're doing it on white your best friend is always going to be white gesso or just white paint and all you need to do is wherever you feel it's it's kind of not right in your eyes just get a bit of that you know dab it on the surface spray it with a bit of water and slowly build up on it or if you feel like you need tons of the white well then go for it so let me just show you what I mean and I'll show you the other products that I use to create this effect so let me just show you the effects first so um, yeah and um, and then we'll talk about the um, the papers. So like I said, I've gone over the top there, and I'm just trying to think of what I could do to tone it down a little bit um, because I don't want to kind of ruin that old aged effect. I have gone over it with a bit of um, vintage photo, but it just seems to be making it jump even more. But um, so you know it can happen to the best uh, of the best out there and so I just wanted to let you know it can happen and that's why you really need to slowly build things up 
When I was doing this, I must admit, I was not in good lighting. Um, as soon as I put the, ca uh, the lighting on for my filming, I went, oh, because I thought it was looking pretty good in the, the dim light. So you need good lighting. Um, so anyway, look, I'm going to just see if I should try and do my white here. Maybe I should mix it in with this, but um, just to tone it down a bit and hopefully not make a mess. So I thought if I could mix a little bit of this green, because there's a bit of that green in there, a bit of that white, kind of mix it with a bit of water. Sort of try and go over it a little bit, just to kind of take a bit of that, that glaring gold patches, because it just looks a bit patchy. And then I can go over it again very carefully. Um, well, I think that's a lot better anyway. Um, it's a bit hard for you to see. But I didn't want it to be a glaring white. I just wanted to kind of fit within the, the colour scheme. So really white is um, an incredible eraser. Oh, when, you, when you feel you've kind of, you know, overreached yourself in certain patches. Now, actually, I'm really happy with that. What I will do, though, because I love that to be gold, when this dries, I'm just going to very carefully just give a little swipe of the gold um, there. So you can use any white that you have, whatever white you have, just go for it. So, like I said, um... You know, take your time whenever you're laying down another colour or you're brushing it, dry brushing it. But I think this turned out beautiful. Um, so this is on my, um, so this is my faded and frayed method. And um, I have the kits in my shop, the silhouette kits. And these you can do with your inkjet printer. And that's what I did with this. You get a really beautiful kind of, a mix of like that kind of Persian China blue kind of faded Persian rug effect but you can also on the on the flip side not in this instance but on the flip side get a very vintage gold kind of old world look and then sometimes you get a really kind of mix of the two which kind of goes into that beautiful shabby kind of khaki color it's it's just really an amazing um, kind of vintage antique effect um, that you can get but the gold then just enhances it when you use some of the um, embossing folders but just quickly let me just show you how you can you know erase anything that's just a bit too messy because um, sometimes it's a little bit tricky so you're just going to lightly sometimes you might have to be a little bit heavy-handed but it can just take off you can see how it's now dulling it down now the other thing is you can absolutely keep wiping it back if you feel that it's too much or you just go over the color over it again so i've actually dulled it down quite considerably um, in you know this particular oh there's a bit of dried stuff there but I'll just put that there and it just takes a while to just gradually work it through and that becomes like an eraser and all of a sudden it's not sort of standing out in the crowd it's blending in better and the other thing is you could do a, uh, a white wash over it very gently. Um, but just remember, it is just normal paper. So, um, yeah. But anyway, the other way of doing it is, because this is pure white, I did go over my edges. Actually, I don't know what that is there. Let's just get a little bit on there. So I'll just activate it a little bit. 
Okay, so I've just, yeah. So you can get a brush to go in wherever it needs to go or a sponge. But that's what I did here. I did ink the edges with the board. But yes, this is basically how I did it. I just picked, I'll show you the colors that I used. Um, and I just very carefully went over them with this. And at times I, you know, kind of got it in with this. And other times, especially if I wanted the vintage photo, because look, this is disintegrating, I went over it with that. So, um, but sometimes you'll just make mistakes because, you know, someone might distract you and you've got your mind on something else. The next thing you know, whoops. Yeah. So another way that you can sort of kind of camouflage things is just grab this and just go in around it. or over it <laughs> um, so that it becomes more of a vintage feel uh, if you're not into the white um, all is not lost but you can create this really beautiful kind of wallpaper effect just by using your embossing folders and colors and then you get these beautiful results look at that I love this I absolutely love it and of course I love how the white is peeking through um, and that's how you can get away with creating something like this so this is why I love this inking board you've got more control you're holding it in your hand if you feel you want to add another color and you can see here I did use a bit of this color and I'll show you the colors in a minute if you feel you want to add another color more contrasting maybe a peacock blue um, you can just start adding it in gradually so you could put it on your finger and do a bit there and a bit there um, but that's how you can create your own wallpapers in your journals so remember below here it was quite untidy well now it's kind of tidied it up it's blended it all in so let's do the same with this page I mean this is really pretty so I'll just hold it up there just for you to um, have a look at so that's what it's looking like okay and that's what this is looking like so if you prefer to add that vintage look so I'll put it this way as well if you want more of a vintage look, that's what it's going to look like. If you want it nice and clean, that's what it looks like. So let me just go over this for myself. And I should have a, a map thing. To, I do have a box that actually catches all my, my debris, my dandruff, my crafting dandruff. Anyway. And as you can see, when you're using a larger brush... It tends to be better than something like this or even um, something like this if you're putting it because there's if you're using this you'd have to be very careful because it's got the square edges and that can be um, a disaster at times so but anyway let's just vintage this up but yeah your white can hide a lot of mistakes and clean things up so I would recommend that you get your colors down that you like and then go over it with your um, this is vintage photo any kind of antique um, look and then the colors underneath will be muted but they'll also pop as well um, but there you go that's how you can create your own wallpaper um, look for your journals and now the reason why we're not seeing a lot of white on this side it's because of the way the paper has been embossed so this is you know this stands up this goes down so I can't 
imagine I can't remember what deboss is and what emboss is <laughs> so anyway what I'm trying to say is I do love the the whites popping in this I think it pops beautifully but this is on the kind of like the reverse or maybe it's the proper side um, but yeah so there's a beautiful um, results to make your own wallpaper effects for your journal papers and then this is the other side that we were playing with with quite a bit of white fixing up my little mistakes there so I'm going to do the same with this now um, many of you might prefer it like this and I totally agree but with a lot of what I'm using um, sometimes it just would stand out like a sore thumb if I was going for an all white journal or cre soft creams maybe soft blues um, something very pastely and soft then definitely um, so I'll just ink it up with the board so you can see how easy it is just to do it with a large sponge just any cheap sponge that you know has a really nice fine um, texture on it and away we go okay I probably was a bit heavy handed there but I'm going for that vintage look and so now I'm just going over it and it really feels like wallpaper as well um, and I will show you the, the inks and everything that I've used. Again, I'm not affiliated with um, anyone. So these are just my personal choices that I like to work with. And um, yeah. Okay, so here's this side. So that's that side there. Possibly a bit too much there. Um, and that's where you can grab your white. And just go over it lightly okay so oh, you're going oh that's a bit too heavy-handed there and just go in with your white or with a very light color that is matching so you might choose to go in there with um, a mix of the, the peacock that I've got here um, and you can fix it up later because now that's looking like a little bit of light, like a bit of a sore thumb. But then you can go over oh, with a bit of more paint. Um, but you could water down the, um, you can just water down anything and, and activate things as well. So I could just try and activate this. It probably won't. Oh, yep, it has. It's amazing what you can pick up sometimes. And all of a sudden, away goes that mistake where, where you might have been a bit heavy-handed. So there is a way around fixing up your kind of inking mistakes. And that will give you confidence if it's something that you're not kind of into. You think, oh no, I'll, I'll muck it up. Um, now see here, I've got a bit of a tear there. That's going to happen because you're weakening the paper every time you put a bit of paint on it or wet it down or um, whatever. <laughs> um, but yeah, okay. So I'm. It, it looks a little bit like I have played with it there because it kind of has dulled it down. But that will mean all I would need to do is just get my... Because I had this... Um, one here I'll show you these colors in a minute all it needs is just me going over it again just to get it that kind of shimmery effect and it's done you know so yeah I'll show you in just a second but yeah I'm just really loving the effects okay so now we're going to do this side and again you know this is beautiful if you're just going in say for a wedding guest book or a wedding anniversary that would look absolutely beautiful especially if the colors are a lot lighter um, but you can already see how fantastic it inks up the um, 
the thing. What do we call this thing? <laughs> the embossing um, just does a beautiful job. Okay. And just be try and be a bit more strategic in where you put it. Again, go over it lightly at first. And I just throw mine in different angles and it leaves some really cool effects behind. So you don't have to do it in the same kind of um, s sort of way. You can mix up the way it's going to be applied. And okay, I love it. Now that I think is beautiful. So um, I'll try to see if I can have some before and after photos to show you. But it was looking very untidy before. I don't think it looks untidy now. I don't know why <laughs> that's there. That's that's probably my only um, annoying thing because it just stands out to me. So I'm going to go in with a little bit of the white and try and go into the hole. I should really have something that will allow me to do that. Oh, there we go. Yep, it's gone. Yay! Um, but can you see how quickly you can fix something that you feel is just, oh, just it's just standing out too much. Um, so there it is. Now the reason why there's a line of demarcation there, that's as far as my embossing folders would go. So that's as far as they would go. Um, but yeah, what do you think, guys? So that's how you can create a vintage wallpaper look. Um, with your embossing folders and if you run into any problems just remember white paint white gesso is your best friend so, so I'm gonna ink this up and this time I'm I'm just going to add some of the other colors first so this is how it's looking white so this is before see what I mean you've got to be careful not to overdo it so this is before this is what it looks like so you might want to get distressed inks and just spray them on and you know brush them down or let them drip down okay um, I'm just going to go with the blues and the vintage and so see that very easy so you yours you remember your inking board it's going to add it because you can hold it and and you can do it standing up or anywhere okay so you're going to get a big nice sponge because you want it to sort of be random when you're hitting the spots on the other side remember hold it like this Okay, and now we're going to go in with, so that was um, Peacock Feathers by Ranger. Now we're going to do this one. And I'm going to grab this. This is really dying on me. I need a new one. So obviously be careful, be gentle um, when, you, when you're using this. Get your board to sit straight. So there you go. You've got to be so careful with um, the papers. That will happen because, so just remember, but you need to just do it with one swoop um, of the embossing machine. So for me, I would, like I said before, just run your embossing folder on very light paper just the once. I unfortunately didn't because I wasn't thinking. Um, but yeah, that's what I would recommend that you do. All right, so now I'm using the Brilliance, um, Brilliant 
I think it's Galaxy one. I'll, I'll show you in a minute. I'm just sort of adding this on here, just to add a little bit of gold. Can you see how it's bringing out the gold here? Um, and so, <laughs> so I got a bit heavy-handed there. Okay, so now that's looking really nice. So look, I'm just going to tear off that bit there, but I don't mind that because you can layer it up on another piece. But this this gold really adds that real kind of old vintage kind of flavor to a um, wallpaper effect. So if you feel that the gold is too loud or too much, then just go over it again, either with white or with the vintage photo. And of course, I'm speeding this up um, because I don't want to kind of hold you guys up with just inking. Okay, and then you can go in a bit more heavier in around the edges. But you will get a distressed look if that's what you're going for. So there you go. That's the before and after. What do you think? Yeah, just remember this is because it's been weakened from the embossing, uh, not from what I'm doing, though I am heavy handed. <laughs> All right, so let's go in with a little bit of green now as well. So I'm just going to grab some green if it will allow me. Okay, so I'm going in with a bit of the green. So, um, I might put a bit of gold on as well. Yeah, it's really weakened the paper, the embossing. So that's what you've just got to keep in mind. And if you don't mind that, then that's absolutely fine. Because you can layer this, you can glue it down on another piece of paper if you so wish. But that's what it's looking like. So that's vintage that's kind of more modern-y kind of the new stuff so let's now ink this one up I mean um, age it okay so you get this remember your inking board And there it is, so something a little bit more lighter. And remember how I said to you there what can happen if it feels like you need more assistance or you feel like it's too dark, then just grab your, your white paints and just very carefully just dull it down. You know kind of distress it with your gesso and um, remember there was a bit of gold here so there's a little bit of gold there I'll go over that again in just a minute but you can see what I mean So if you, go, if you go over the top, you have gesso or white paint as your friend. And just do it as randomly and as very natural as possible. Um, sometimes you can activate it as well. And say this is a bit too much for you there you can dull it down with that and then 
once you feel happy that it's dried enough I'm just going to race it through you might just want to get in with some gold so I'm going to use this gold which I'll mention in just a second and um, Just very subtly. And it just hits those little spots beautifully. Now, um, so this one here, I'm going to go over it with this one. some more color to it um, let me just grab a little bit of the green and try and go over it just with this on its own very careful because it's it's got those square bits so Okay, so it's just a matter of playing with your colours and we'll get a little bit of the peacock blue happening. These colours are just so beautiful together. Look at that, and that's just making it pop beautifully. Yeah, I love it. And this one could be a bit more subtle. So everyone, there we have it. That's how it's looking. Um, so I'll just put that there for you to have a look and then we'll talk about the colors. Let me just put this underneath. Okay, so if that happens to you, why not ink these bits up as well? Now sometimes with your inking board there's going to be situations where you're not going to be able to use it, you know, with little small things like this. You may need to pick it up with your hands and go in with something like this or your fingers very gently and then it makes it look like, um, you know, it's meant to be old. And the other thing you can do is you can then go around the edges with this just to kind of distress it even more. So, and you can even sort of See how I'm doing that? Because the paper's kind of a bit crinkly. I'll just sort of... Okay. Yeah, I'm loving it. Love, love. That's beautiful. Okay, so here's the one that I started off with showing you. And I might just do that with this here just to kind of blend it a bit more. And, you know, you can get your sponge to do it, but sometimes the sponge won't go in there. You just need to be a little bit more precise. So, just using your, what do we call this thing? Um, and then you can go in with your sponge a little bit just to wipe off the excess. But you use your inking board. So, big sponges for me are my best friend. If you find inking challenging, try a big sponge but remember always hold it this way or this way so that you don't get any sharp edges because um, that can ruin the effect you're wanting to to do that and use an inking board honestly you will love it with an inking board it just makes life easy it's just a matter of learning how to hold it and then just ink away and it doesn't have to be a special kind of blend either so, um, and then I showed you how to fix up your mistakes. You can use white, or then you can go over everything again with vintage photo. So this is what we've just accomplished now. 
So I'll just put that there and hopefully you'll be able to see it okay. We've got this one here and then this one. So I hope that's inspired you. Now let me show you all the little um, tools of the trade and I'll put them on this board here. Okay, so who did we have? Like to begin with, I was using this one. Um, the very when you when I first introduced myself to you today on the 4th of November, I had used some of the peanut brittle on this one here. So peanut brittle gives it kind of like a golden vintage um, effect. Okay, so these were just the ones that I picked out. Um, and there's ones as well okay so what have we got we've got of course vintage photo but anything that's like a coffee colored ink pad is is going to do a beautiful job hands down and then I've got the tiny vintage photo distressed by Ranger so memento Lux. this is the peanut brittle and it's by oh I can never say their name so um, I'll just put it there for you I used to know how to say it, but not anymore. It's <laughs> yeah. Okay, so peanut brittle from those people. And I think it's the same with these. Uh, it's the same company that I just showed you. Okay, and it's Versa Color Bamboo Galaxy Gold Dewdrop by the same people. <gasps> okay, so Sukuniko. Uh, anyway, I'm sorry, pet company, that I don't know your name. It's terrible. And then there's again Ranger um, Peacock Feathers. Peacock Feathers there. Okay, so I've shown you everything. And then Bree Reese, who I'm just only recently acquainted with their goods. So I don't know who they are, where they're based. They're probably in America. I don't know. But I'm so excited. Beautiful paints. Absolutely beautiful. So these are everything. So you might want to take a screenshot or something um, for the names of all the products that are used. And these are just ordinary kitchen sponges that, you know, most people have dishwashers these days. But if you don't, you just pick them up from $2 shop or somewhere on your supermarket shelves. Sometimes they have it on the back and it's in the way so you can just cut it off. Um, so sometimes I might use that if I need to kind of, I don't know, distress a bit of an edge page. Or just kind of roughen something up. So I just sort of keep it there just in case I need it. Some of them will disintegrate, others will last the distance. Uh, I think it's time for me to start getting a new one with this one here. And then, of course, these are great. Um, you can buy a whole lot of them and have them in containers. And then you just use the same colored one rather than using the, the same and then get muddying your colors. So they're fantastic for those little in-the-corner bits and challenging stuff. Um, okay, so this is Gemini by Crafts Companion. Okay, again, I'm not affiliated with anyone. That's this one. It's beautiful, don't you think? It's just beautiful. Um, so it's called Gemini. So whatever I mention here won't be listed below, but that's Gemini by Crafter's Companion. Okay, so that's that one. And then this one was this one here. Um, this one is Spellbinders. Okay. S E S double zero seven and it's i think like a flourish if you put down flourish spell binders um that might help and um yeah i'm, I'm sure yeah as i said i can't remember and sometimes in the past i never kept the packaging i know it's so silly but anyway i never thought i'd be kind of doing youtube tutorials at the time it never occurred to me so yeah Okay, so that's that. Oh, I'm loving this. So making your own kind of wallpaper effects. And this one, I'm absolutely in love with this one. This, yeah, this is the one that I used 
um, a couple of years ago now. Um, it was in one of my videos and I know I said that I would show you how I made these and painted these up and I'm really sorry that I've never uploaded it yet. I've still got the footage. It's really long. I, I don't know if people would like to see it kind of. It's not the best quality um, filming, but at least you get to see the prices. So I'll see. I'll see. It's my intention to do everything that I share but of course with my health and life and everything it's not always easy now that one that I just showed you but it's spell binders and this is the number you're going to need it's E3D018 and I think it's the emboss abilities range so I've got quite a few of them because they're very medieval to me, very Renaissance old world. And so that's the why, why I've really kind of been drawn to these. So many of us love that old world vintage feel to wallpapers, don't we? But not all of us have wallpaper, vintage wallpaper. Well, how about if we make our own? So... That's what we've done today. So I hope this has inspired you to make your own kind of vintage style papers using your embossing folders. Uh, you can use any embossing folders that you like. Some are full page, some aren't. You can work your way around it. Like I said, I'm not an expert at using my Big Shot, but um, I just go with the intuition of pressure don't want to break anything so just try it out first then just keep adjusting your pressure plates and so forth but anyway I hope this has inspired you thank you so much for your company and joining me on my show and share and I'll see you guys soon take care everyone thank you bye